Hey guys, welcome to Lara Tips. In today's video, we'll be looking at four new things that are added to Laravel version 9.28.0. So let's get started. The first thing that has been added is this signal traps. Using the signal traps, you can easily trap the signals like control T whenever you are running a command. Suppose, let's say whenever you are running a command and if you want to exit from that command, then you will press control C. Before there wasn't a way to capture that, but now there is. Suppose, let's say you ran a command and a bunch of database operations were performed, which can take, let's say about four to five seconds, but you pressed control C in one or two seconds, then half of the code might have already been executed. But when you press control C, then you want to reboard those changes before it wasn't possible but now it is possible let me show you one example from the documentation itself so this is the code i'll just copy this code and add it inside this console.psp file which is inside the routes directory in this example we are just setting this continue and we are looping through this continuously unless we click on this control c whenever we click on control c this sig int event will be sent to the command and it will actually trap that sigint event and execute the code that is inside. Here we are just setting the continue to be false and then this while loop will not get executed afterwards. The command name is export sales. Whenever we enter control C after running this command then this should get logged. So here let me run PHP artisan export sales and if I hit enter then it will actually just infinitely loop through this and it will just show me this exporting batch of cells but now let me press ctrl c then you can see here this one symbol over here and that has been executed because it went inside it and continue what's set to false and then it didn't go inside it which means that there should be a clean op dot 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 inside our laravel dot log file and you can see that over here and before moving to the next step, I would like you to introduce to this video sponsor, which is Honey Badger. It is obvious that we run into some errors. Everyone's code will have some errors, even if the code is written by amazing developers like my viewers. In such case, Honey Badger can be your best friend. Honey Badger allows you to monitor those errors, uptime, check-ins, and deployments in real time with easy to use interface. With that, you'll be able to know what happened immediately when your customers encounter those errors whenever they are using your application or website. Then you'll be notified via email, SMS, Slack, and many more immediately. You can easily install Honeybazer in minutes and when something goes wrong in your application, you can go to your dashboard and see full detail of the errors, which will help you to solve the issue much more faster. And thanks to Honeybazer for sponsoring this video. Honeybazer has both free and paid version and you can check the link in the description and be a DevOps hero in minutes by using Honeybazer. Now the second tip that has been added is allow validator messages to be used by using the nested arrays. Here in the tinker well, let me show you an example. So this is a validator. So this is the data that is coming from the request. This one, this is the validation that we are writing over here. Let's say we want to show a different message for these validations. Then we would generally write it over here. These are the messages. If I just comment this out, and you can see here, let me just do it over here like this empty string and run it. Then it will say email field is required. But if I just write this one, this email dot required and this required, then it will actually show this message instead of this here. So I'll run it. Then you can see this message. So before we had to write here email dot email dot and email dot. You can see here parameter name, this key and the rule name. So email dot required email dot email and email dot mean everything we had to write it like this. But now instead of these, we can actually write it like this as well. Let me replace this thing with this like this. And now if I run it, then everything will work the same way. And let me just write random character over here and then invalid email, which is coming from this. The third thing that has been added is this pending command assert OK whenever we are testing a command. 
I have here this example test. I have this command. So before, whenever we were testing a command, then we can do assert successfully, which means that this command was ran successfully. If I just run this, best run, then you can see here one test pass. But now instead of assert successful, we can also call assert. Okay, just like how we call in the HTTP response. I'll comment this out and again I'll run this paste run then you can see here we can see the same results the fourth and the final thing that has been added is the application facade macroable you can see here we can just do it like this so let me just copy this thing from here and let me go to app service provider and here let me just do it like this import this app which is this app support facade and let's say is staging and let let us just return this let's say config app dot environment is staging so let me show you that config slash app you can see here and the env is over here and which in turn takes this env dot env from here this is local by default it's local and its production is present in the app facade but is staging is not present so we can do it like this now let me go over here comment this out and here app and let's say is staging like this and run then it should return false because the value is not staging but before we couldn't do this we couldn't make this app macroable and if we ran it then it would just throw an error so let me come uncomment this and go over here in the env and let's say staging and just go over here and run it then you can see true 